way to the Chinese visa application center. Currently in the tram in Den Haag because they have only one center in Den Haag, uh, in Netherlands. So I will soon reach there and I'll keep you updated. So there's a big backstory why this is happening this week. Why am I going to the Chinese visa application center? You might be seeing I'm a little bit deprived of sleep, but I'm very happy for this moment and opportunity. So I will let you know the backstory when I'm returning from the visa. After I finish the visa application, I'm free for explaining you. days back I, I submitted to a doctoral consortium in China that's a very famous conference in my field sponsored by ECM and is in multimodal interaction so what happened was that in that conference I got accepted with a full scholarship of around $800 initially they have given that and later they will say I think it will be even $600 more so it will be around $1500 or $1600 that's what I heard $600 to $800 more so the scholarship amount in euros will be around 1400 euros so that gives me a license to go there and so I am now on my way to the visa application center and before that I just wanted to talk to you what happened so I was super happy because I didn't expect it to get accepted normally these are full scholarship applications so if you get accepted in this kind of a doctoral consortium then the chances are really less because the person who was the chair one was like in the research university in Tokyo and another was in Microsoft so the selection criteria is also very selective there are like 30 to 40 applicants and only few uh, nine are accepted so obviously I'm super happy and that's why I had to fill the visa application as soon as possible because Chinese visa may sometimes it will be in two weeks sometimes it might take one month and why would you delay something like this when I have this kind of opportunity and my supervisors are also really happy because of all the hard work that paid off and soon you will see I think in October I am going to China so now I am walking my way to the visa application center and I will meet you there if I can film inside I am not sure otherwise I will tell you the rest of the story when I am returning from Den Haag to my place in Balkenberg. Normally everything I print in the university is always free but I forgot something and I had to come here to a copy shop. Normally a copy shop C-O-P-I-E is the shop where you can print, bind and do this kind of stationary stuff. And the problem was that it's not a problem thing I got printed because it was a last minute ID that I needed and that person sent me an email in the night so I could not print it in the university and for that one page costs like 95 cents in a color print which I would say is really really expensive compared to what you get in other shops or maybe in the university where it is free for I think not for students but for employees like us like PhDs or professors so I arrived at the Chinese visa application center it's in the sixth floor of this building and I don't think they will allow me to film. So done with my visa application. It's really really very good service. The people are really friendly and they also needed an additional document which I had to print. They had a printing service which was much cheaper so the 
said the visa will be ready in three days but as i am so far i don't want to come back here again so i just choose the post option so i guess that will take like two more weeks so if you choose the post option then it will take 10 more days but the normal visa if you collect it from here then it's only three days it's really nice So apparently I was in the wrong direction stop, the same tram number but here you see the directions. I've mentioned that in some videos like same number but you have to see the direction. Sometimes one direction will be on the opposite side of the road and the other direction will be in this side. So you have to see all the things like the number and the direction. I was in the wrong one and then I realized and I changed the stop. It's just very near but probably i'll have some lunch and maybe buy some grocery and then i'll go back if i get time to discuss something about this doctoral consortium like some tips of what you should apply which doctoral consortiums you should target and why you should target what is the benefit of this then i will share it with you otherwise it will be a goodbye from me. Let's see whether I do a proper goodbye or this is the short goodbye. I've never been to this part of the hay. It looks really beautiful. This is some Rembrandt Dutch Golden Age. So the point that I wanted to make is that you should attend these doctoral consortiums. Normally they are like the portals to meet a lot of people and also share your research, get feedback, get advice and I mean you can get a lot of things from here so it's basically an opportunity to go out there and talk to people and if you have any questions or if you are working on some prototype you might find some partners like in my case I have someone from Microsoft who is uh, building something and using sensors and I might use his uh, expertise or some kind of device that I am using with him. And apart from that, there will be like PhDs from US all over the world, like Carnegie Mellon University and different kind of universities where you will, you can exchange your research. And sometimes I've seen like this kind of uh, events uh, give you the the license to do certain things. And sometimes they come together and write a joint proposal or a joint workshop, and you never know where it leads you. So this kind of uh, happenings you should have so sometimes something is planned something is unplanned but at the end you never know how it will it is going to help you and most of the doctoral consortiums are organized by US sponsored by US companies so they normally have a lot of funding and, the, and an average like the, accept, the acceptance rate is also very less and the funding is around like uh, say like $800, $1,000, it's always in the range of $1,000 or more. So you would not feel the need for any problem of traveling there or staying there, applying for the visa and other kind of things. So irrespective of wherever you are, even if you don't do your PhD in Netherlands, you should grasp this opportunity to attend doctoral consortiums, meet different people, maybe volunteer something and that's the advice so how you prepare a doctoral consortium application is a big thing i will explain that in different videos for now enjoy the beauty and before i go for lunch have a glimpse of the beauty so till then see you off bye